All right, about our team, obviously, um, good turnout. Everybody's excited about our team. Uh, I'm excited about our team. We've had a really great uh, off season as far as you know, adding players, adding coaches. Um, and uh, we had a great summer uh, with basketball practice, and we had a really great fall. We actually just officially started practice yesterday. Um, we did a lot of individual work. Um, you have eight new guys, you have a lot to teach and a lot of things to do. So we officially started yesterday, which is kind of scary because we have a private scrimmage this Saturday. Um, uh, but we'll be ready uh, for it. Um, but we're excited. We have a, you know, a nice blend of, well, a lot of newcomers, but a little bit, you know, older. Um, and we have a lot of experience coming back with Dante and Eric and Hakeem, uh, guys that played a lot of minutes for us last year, and then Fats and Q. Um, here and, and Xavier, who's 24 years old, so might be our oldest team we've had in quite some time. We've had a lot of young teams uh, here at Maryland. So probably the thing I'm most excited about is how well our guys get along. It's not, you know, not um, it's something that we do, you know, frequently here. Our teams get along. We have great chemistry. Um, but when you add that many new players to have our chemistry the way it is right now, of course we haven't lost a game yet. But uh, these guys are really working hard and sticking together. So it's been a fun team to, uh, to be around. I think we have a deep team. I think we have a hungry team. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to just playing another, probably the best league in the country again uh, for third straight year. Uh, very, very deep league and, and uh, one that will get us ready uh, for the postseason. So we're excited. And uh, thanks for coming. And we'll open it up for questions. Please raise your hand for questions. Say your name and affiliation, please. Mark, uh, Dave Preston, WTFB Radio, uh, welcome back. Um, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah should be on. Uh, um, you had transfers in the past come in and make an impact. What's your biggest challenge trying to blend the new and the old, especially with the expectations you have with uh, guys like Bats and uh, Q Well, uh, they all came here for different reasons, right? So. Fats played at a lower level, had to do a lot of scoring. And, um, you know, one of the things we talked about when we recruited him, he doesn't have to s score as much here. Now, he'll have nights where he scores, um, but make guys around him better. And he's, he's very good at that. He's, he's extremely fast. He reminds you, he'll remind the fans a lot of Anthony. I'm not going to compare him to Anthony because that's not fair. Um, but he's every bit as fast and, and quick, and, and uh, he's a really smart, intelligent player on both ends of the floor so his teams always win whenever we break the teams up in scrimmage his team always wins no matter who I put on it so it's a winner uh, but he wanted to play at the highest level he, you know he knew Dante in high school and knew some of the players so uh, that was good Q came here um, was just kind of looking for uh, something new I guess and uh, he saw an opportunity we didn't have a center really on the team and uh, so it was a great opportunity for him to come in and play right away and you know, we're challenging him to do things a little bit differently, but he's a great kid. Him and Fats are both great kids. Uh, Ian Martinez has been a pleasant surprise. We knew he was a good player. Uh, he's going to be a multi-position guy for us. He'll play the one and the two. Um, great kid. Got hurt this summer, so he missed the summer, but he's healthy now and practicing. Really good athlete. Xavier, older kid. He's trying to make money playing basketball. I realize it's a real world out there and it's tough. Decided to come to Maryland and and um, play at the highest level, and he kind of fits what we needed. Um, experience, toughness, really good defender. Um, Pablo, another big body kid, athletic. I think the thing you'll notice when you first see us, and you'll see us practice today, is one, how hard we practice, and two, how more athletic we are, bigger, faster, stronger. Um, it's quite evident uh, in everything we're doing. And then and you got all the returning players. Um, Dante's gotten a lot better. Eric's gotten a lot. Eric was humble through the NBA process, um, so he's 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 hungry. Uh, Hakeem's put on about 15 pounds of muscle. He looks like a whole different player. He's a terrific, terrific player. Really knows how to play. A guy like James Graham, Marcus Dockery, they've all they've all gotten better. So, and I consider James a freshman uh, coming in. Uh, pleasant surprise, Julian Reese out of Baltimore. Um, you know, he's a little further along than we thought. He's got that Baltimore toughness, um, inside-out player, really good player. So 
it's a good mix. Right now, we feel good about it. And uh, you'll see when we probably, the guys really like each other. They really care about each other. And that's, that's a good sign. You know, I'm getting a little bit older. I've had a lot of teams. So when you have a team that acts the way this team acts, it gives you a chance to be good. Coach, Coach Kevin Richardson with the Baltimore Sun. How, uh, how has the uh, transfer portal uh, changed college sports? And the other question is, uh, how do you sell a uh, recruit on a position when you have guys that, you know, high level of players that you have, how do you sell them to come into your program when you may have to sit a year or two? Yeah, so uh, the portal's definitely changed. Um, you know, everything's about the student athlete and, um, you know, and guys were able to leave and go right away. Now the portal was good for us last year. The year before it wasn't quite as good for us. Um, it, it's part of our game. It is what it is. We want to blend it. We still want to sign some high school players, but we want to make, make sure we can add players to, to make us good. I think the rich get richer. I think the top is better. I think college basketball at the top will be better than it's been um, because teams will be deeper. Um, you know, those players might not have been around late. You just had to go with what you got. And you've been able to add pieces. So, um, you know, it's really a hard sell. So the year before, everybody thought we had five starters on our team. And it was really hard to get someone out of the portal. Now the portal was different. It was mostly grad students at that time. Um, now the portal's all kinds of guys. Um, but it's Maryland. You know, it's a lot to sell here. And, um, you know, we first and foremost, we look for personalities and competitors that are going to fit in, guys that love basketball, guys that aren't. I'm not going to worry about it at night. Uh, they're making the right decisions. They are 18 to 22 year old boys. If you've had one, you know, um, but it, you know, that's kind of what we look for and we've been successful with that, but a uh, lot to sell, a lot of history, beautiful building. We've been successful. We're in the best league in the country. I can go on and on live in the greatest pl place in the world. I think this area is terrific. So uh, there's so much to sell. Hey, Mark. Um, I don't think this is working, working, but um, oh, do I have to wait? You're good, too. Okay. I want um, everybody to hear your question. Okay. okay. Sorry. Um, I was just curious, over the last few years, you had pretty consistent teams <coughs> getting to the NCAA tournament, winning a game. What, what do you see as the next step? And I know this is the big question here, but, but how do you try to take that next step? Yeah. You know, we, we've had some teams that overachieved that made the tournament and won a game, probably weren't supposed to. We maybe had a game team or two that didn't go as far as we thought. I still feel cheated because of COVID. You know, we had an excellent team. Who knows what that, you know, we could have lost in the first round. Everybody had been yelling at me after that, but we could have also gone to a final four or a lead eight or something. So it's obviously the next step. You know, Damon and I talk about it all the time. We know where we are as a program. Uh, let me tell you something, the NCAA tournament's for real now. There's no bad teams. Uh, when you win a game, you've beaten somebody really, really good. I remember a few years ago, we beat Belmont. We played as well as we could play and beat them by two. Um, so, you know, last year we were, you know, excellent defensively against UConn and we ran into a buzzsaw that made every shot. So I think this team has a chance to do that because we're going to be a little bit deeper, a little bit more experienced. We have really good guards. Um, I'm a blessed guy. You know, at some point I'm going to be blessed enough to make a run in the NCAA tournament. We, we've been really consistent. Um, you know, take away the injuries, it could be seven straight years to the NCAA tournament. Um, we've been really consistent, and uh, but I know that I know that year is coming. Hopefully, it's this year. Coach Chick Hernandez, CBS Sports. Um, you mentioned Eric being humbled with the NBA process. I don't know how many guys you've had to go through it and come back. What's been the general uh, uh, the way they've played when they come back? And what's that conversation like when they do come back? Well, I think every kid's different, but we've had a, a lot that have come back, obviously. Um, and they've all come back for the right reasons. It's where they need to be. You can get their degree and Eric will graduate. He'll just need a few hours next semester to graduate, uh, keep our streak alive. Uh, I think we're at 33 uh, straight since I've been here. Seniors that have graduated, all 33 um, have graduated. Um, so that's important. Um, I just think it was like, you know, you're winning, you're playing at Maryland, you, you, you think it's automatic, you might get a chance to, to go to the NBA. And he really humbled him and he, he worked really hard. He had a great summer, realized there's some things like leadership, 
uh, being more consistent, um, becoming a better defender. Um, we know he can score, so, um, and, and I think it's the best thing for him. I think Eric to graduate from Maryland and play his senior year, I, I just don't know why kids give it up. I, I really don't. I think, imagine if Anthony would have given up his senior year and how his story is totally different. I just wish more kids would understand that college is special and stick around longer. And I'm glad Eric did, and I imagine he's going to have a great year. And uh, he'll give, him, give himself to win another championship, maybe hang from the Raptors. Who knows what kind of year he's going to have. So, um, but he put his, by coming back, he has a chance to do that. Hey, Coach. Um, Ryan McFadden from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, the Big Ten has a lot of talented big guys. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, the Big Ten has a lot of talented big guys like Hunter Dickinson and Kofi Colbert. Just how important is it to have someone like you down low going, going against those yeah. guys? Yeah, and <clears throat> there's probably some you didn't mention that are pretty good too. And um, we weren't built for last year's Big Ten. We kind of figured it out just enough to make the tournament. But um, yeah, we're, we're more built for the Big Ten. Um, we're, we got who's experienced and long and physical and Juju 6'10 and so it gives you another one. Pablo's a big strong kid at 6'8, 240 pounds. You know, Dante can go to five. He did it last year and the way we team defend allows us to do it. But yeah, it helps. It just probably where it helps more is we had no low post scoring. And you look at our teams when we've been successful, we've had a lot of low post scoring and Q's really good down there. Um, so it just gives you more ways to score. It was really hard for us. We go in droughts last year because we, we had, you know, we had to rely on a jump shot or beat someone off the dribble. Um, so that that helps. But physically, we're much more equipped uh, to stay fresh and compete at a high, the highest level of the Big Ten. Mark, uh, adjacent to that question, with with what Dante gets to deal with now, not necessarily having some of those matchups. How different do you think things are going to be for him, and how well equipped is he to take advantage of how different things are likely to be for him? Yeah, so he's still stronger than most fours that he'll play against. Um, we'll play differently. If you've watched our teams the last three years, we've had to coach differently all three years because our teams have been drastically different all three years. Uh, we'll play a little bit different, a little closer to the way we played with Bruno. Um, but we had sticks out there too, so we had a big lineup. We won't play the big lineup quite as much uh, this season. Um, he's gotten better. Dante's really gotten better. He's worked. I, you know, I've always said publicly and to Dante, he was a one out of every four guy, day guy as a freshman. Then he was an every other day last year, and this year he's four out of five, or sometimes five out of five uh, during a week, working and, and being the doing the right thing. So leadership, practicing hard. Um, so he's he's gotten a lot better. He can do things one on one. He's one of the elite shooters in the Big Ten. He shot 45 percent from three last year. So I think he's even a better shooter. He can get hot. And he can score in a variety of ways. I mean, back guys down. He can score off the dribble. He can shoot threes. We can post him up some. Uh, so I think he I think he's going to have a great year. Hey, Coach Reese, I went to the left bench. Good to see you. You're standing right behind it, the infamous wall student section. Yeah. Especially after last year, no fans. How excited are you to have them back in the building this year? Yeah, I mean, you see all the sports that are playing in front of fans now, how excited the coaches and the athletes are. And this place is special. This building's special. To me, um, when it's a big game and our fans know we need it, um, this is the top four or five building in the country. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of really good buildings uh, around. And uh, we missed them. We lost more games last year at home. You know, we weren't as good and the league was terrific. Um, but we, I don't think we'd have lost as many if we'd had our fan base. So um, <clears throat> I think we had the best home record in the Big Ten the last six years or whatever. There's a reason uh, for that uh, because of our fan base. And our students are very important. They know that. Um, we're going to honor Lefty this year. We're doing the uh, Midnight Miles, the 50th anniversary. We had 500 students sign up in the first 24 hours. I'm not sure what we're at now number-wise, but hopefully we'll have 1,500 to 2,000 kids uh, that night and have a little party after we run a mile, um, eat some pizza, uh, give away some prizes. Um, they're important to us, and uh, uh, we need them. You know, I think every successful program has a great fan base and a fan base that just 
There's a lot of games that our fan base has won for us that we shouldn't have won, but they would not give up. They would not leave early. They stuck with us uh, till the end. And, and that's why I came to Maryland, because we have a special fan base and they really care about basketball. And uh, I imagine we're going to be pretty good at home. It'll be great on Tuesday night, the 9th, I believe it is. Uh, hopefully we'll have a great turnout and um, have a lot of students here that night. And just being back in front of the fans will be great. Coach uh, Bruce Posner from uh, Turf Ball. Coach, you're one of the most optimistic guys I've ever met. Every year you have- you tell my wife that. Well, that's a basketball coach. Hey, give me your optimism on this team. You know, uh, how do you look at this team? Where do you see your strengths? Offensively, what you're going to do, and defensively, what are the strengths that make you optimistic this year? Uh, well, our strengths are we're older, and it, it's huge in college basketball. Um, if you look at the last several uh, champions, uh, they've been old. NCAA champions have been old. League champions have been old. Um, so we have great guard play. Uh, Fats and Eric are, are terrific players. Ian Martinez, terrific player. Um, Keem Hart, terrific play. So we have, you know, we have experience. We have really, really good guard play. And then we have the size to, um, you know, match up against big teams, which we did last year. Well, might not have to double as much, you know, and be in rotation all the time and be in rotation on rebounding. Um, we have a lot of guys that can score the basketball. We have a lot of guys that can shoot the basketball. We play a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, you know. If you ever come watch us in the summer and in the fall, and then you know, even when the season ends, we'll go four weeks pretty hard after the season. We, we make guys better individually. And um, um, so, and I think our depth's really good. And we're fast, you'll see it today at practice, we're really fast. Um, and we're athletic. And um, I think we're well coached. So <laughs> that's why I think we're gonna be pretty good. Hey coach, uh, Jacob Richardson from the Diamondbacks. Um, you've got two players in Pablo Zuba and James Graham who are still some of the youngest players on the team, but they already have some uh, experience under their belt. So. Can you just kind of tell us what are you hoping to see from this year, especially, you know, you've talked about it, more veteran team, where we need to see them get to play well? Yeah, so the, all three of those kids, uh, Pablo, James, and Juju, all turned 18 during the summer. Uh, June 18th, June 30th, and July 3rd, they turned 18. So when they came here, they were 17. James obviously came at Christmas last year. Um, thank God he did. He's a much better player. He's changed his body. You see his body now. Um, and um, I see them all helping us. Yeah, youthful exuberance. Um, uh, they all give us something different. Ju Juju, like I said, Baltimore nastiness. Can hit, we scrimmaged yesterday. We, we took the weekend off. It's our last free weekend for a long, long time. And um, we took the weekend off and we got up and down yesterday for 15 minutes. Hit three or four offensive rebound putbacks against a pretty good player in Q. Um, so he's got some game. Then he did a pick and pop three uh, in the scrimmage. So he's going to help us. Um, Pablo is a great athlete. Pablo guards Dante every day. He gives Dante fits. He's physical. He can move his feet. We can switch screens with him one through four. He can guard one through five. He can guard his center. He's been a five most of his career. We'll make him more of a perimeter player. Uh, so he'll help us. And then James is just an excellent shooter. I mean. Well, you know, could be one of the best shooters on a team that has a really a lot of good shooters. And um, he can really shoot. It. He can get hot. James can make a little scrimmage. He can make three threes in five possessions and really change his scrimmage. And he'll change games that way, too. And he can make tough shots. So they'll have great size. Uh, James being 6'5", 6'6", uh, Pablo 6'8", and Juju 6'10". So I think that's really what will stick out to you is just the size of our team. It's just... It's just totally different than what you've seen last year. Got some new faces. Hey, Coach Sturgeon. Chris Idea from Perpetual Radio in Baltimore. Um, talk about your assistant coach, Coach Manning, who had a good career at um, you know, Wake Forest. And, good. Had a, and, had, you know, a, a, you know, and then also Coach Brady, who spent some time down at JMU. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. Um, Really, the only people that know what you're going through are people that have been head coaches. 
I mean, I used to think that I was going to be a pretty good coach, but I had no idea when I was assistant what guys were going through. And so Danny and, and, and Matt uh, know. Um, Matt's a terrific coach. Matt's been with me. Matt's a terrific all-around coach, um, recruiting coach, basketball coach, works hard, great individual coach, great team coach. Uh, and then Danny's a guy I've known since I was 18 and uh, a good friend of mine. We went through a lot together. And he loves to coach. And uh, cause I asked him why he wants to do this. Um, and uh, he's come out here and you'll see today, he's, he's into every possession, never takes a possession off coaching. Um, you know, he's a great all around coach, but he's a terrific big man coach. And um, he's a great coach. He just took a job that's very difficult and he did great at Tulsa. And, um, you know, I'm just lucky to have both of those guys uh, on my staff. They really, have, they make me a better coach and a better person. All right, coach, thank you very much. That's it? All right, thank you. <laughs>